today I'm going to be making a pretty easy meal and I just thought I would share this with you. What I'm going to be making is some mashed potatoes and asparagus at the end. Our main item is the Atlantic salmon and some rice. Now me, my most time consuming thing is the rice, so I'm starting with the rice first. That's kind of how I make my food. You want to get your little measuring cup and you're going to measure out two cups of rice. Once you have it distributed evenly, you know, it's right there, two cups, bam, now we're going to wash the rice. So when I do one cup of rice, I use, just use this one, but when I do two cups of rice, I use this big one. This big uh, colander, I don't know what it's called, but you get the picture. So we're going to put the rice in here and wash it. Before you place the rice in there, you want to spray some Pam. I know it's a non-stick Pam. I like to do that. And as I'm putting this, this uh, rice in here, I am filling up the same measuring cup and I'm filling it up to two and a half cups of water. That is the key. Always use the same measuring cup that you did with the rice, okay? I like to look at it right down there, right where the Pyrex is two cups and that way I can make sure that it is two cups so we put the two cups in there now this one is not a measuring that measures uh, more than two cups so you have to remember we have to do a half so then after we pour the two cups we have to fill it up to the half way mark right here we got our two and a half cups ready and as you can already see it's doing its thing let's finish it off and that's good to go so now we're gonna put it on medium high heat and on my stove I like to put it on six I put it on six and I'm gonna mix it around real quick. And I like to add some salt. I have Himalayan salt and regular salt, it's up to you. I think personally, so I just started using this Himalayan salt, I think it is actually very strong. So it's not like the regular salt, so you don't want to put too much, but I like to do that, add some salt. Then I like to grab this little spoon from my rice cooker. This is what I like to do, I'm gonna mix it around. If there's any chunky parts, break that down. And for this, you are gonna need a, a pot with a lid. Or if not, you can put a plate on top of it, I guess. Now you're gonna cover it with the lid. You're gonna let that cook for eight to 10 minutes. I don't trust myself, so I always put a timer. Now that it's been eight minutes, I go ahead and open the lid. Just check on the rice. So it looks like, so I kinda like to look at it. And if it looks like it needs a little more, it, so I always say eight to 10 minutes. So you can add two more minutes if it's not looking good to you. You know what I mean? If it's too watery or whatever. To me, that looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is put this on low. I like to put it in the middle of low and two, if that makes sense. And then I, like I said, I like to mix it around, just kind of mix it around. I'm flattening out the rice with the spatula. You don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do. I just like to ensure that everything cooks evenly because I don't want it to be lumps. And you also don't have to use this big, a big um, pot like this. That's what more rice looks like now. It's flat. That's what I meant, flatten it out. So now that it's flat, I'm going to cover it with the lid. And we forget about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. No. So we covered it. It's on low. And now we're going to let it cook for... 25 minutes. I should make another video of all the type of types of uh, potatoes you can make. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes and I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight potatoes because we like mashed potatoes over here. So I'm gonna skin them and then cut them and be back. Now real quick to skin them, I either like to use this one right here or this one right here. I really like the brand KitchenAid. I feel like they've never done me wrong. So most of my things are from KitchenAid. Honestly guys, get quality. Quality is really important when it comes to the kitchen, okay? Because you don't want to get some shitty ones. I initially, when I first started cooking, I got some shitty ones, and <sighs> it's very time consuming. With this, it's so fast. This is what our potatoes are looking like after they're peeled, and this is what I'm going to be using. I like to use something kind of high. I cut them like that. You can cut them even more to make it easier for whenever it's time to mash. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to fill it up just a little past the potatoes. So after adding the water, this is what the potatoes should look like, like this. You add it just a little above the highest potato. We're gonna put it on the stove. 
and we're gonna put it on medium high heat again this is what it looks like i know i should have done a close-up of the other one but this is what it looks like on the stove i know some people are very visual so there you go this is also another one of those where you need a lid before i add the lid i do like to add some salt real quick i did just want to mention when it comes to salt one thing that i learned from a lot of videos that really stuck to me is you can always add more salt but you can't take away salt so there has been times when i first started that i made food too salty so just keep that in mind you can always add more salt but you can't take it away once it's there so now i'm just gonna let that cook I let it cook for 20, 25 minutes. It's been 25 minutes. Let's check on the rice. So this is what the rice should be looking like, nice and fluffy. I like to kind of go like lines, make little lines like that. to kind of fluff it out even more. You got your rice. So now I'm getting ready to make the salmon. I don't know if this is gonna be controversial or not, but this is what I like to use. So many videos I've watched, they recommend to use stainless steel, and that's what I like to use with the salmon. After you pet it dry, place it in your cutting board. I'm actually not going to cut it, that way it's easier for me to season the entire salmon. I want to note real quick that this is a two-part salmon recipe, so we're also going to preheat the oven because we're going to be putting it in the oven. I'm going to preheat the oven to... How is that on 500? What the hell? 375. And I always like to check my oven because sometimes I put things in there. The ingredients you're going to need for the salmon is going to be oregano, salt, garlic powder, onion powder. And today I'm going to be using smoked paprika, but usually I just do regular paprika. But I want to see how this is going to turn out with smoked paprika. Cajun seasoning, black pepper, and some parsley flakes. I'm going to add some uh, oil to this already. That way when I turn it on, I don't have to think about it. Now what I am going to do is cut the fat. Y'all see that little fat right there? I do not like any fat. And you can also take the skin off. I'm going to leave the skin on. And I like to take it off when I'm eating it. But it's up to you. I don't love the skin. And no, I don't have any specific measurements for seasoning. I know some people hate that. When you're starting to cook, I used to hate that. But now I understand why people don't, some people don't give exact measurements. I do a generous amount everywhere and then kind of move it around and then I'll flip it and add it to it. Yeah, and, and yes, by the way, yes, you want to add it to the skin too. Because if the people are eating it with the skin, why wouldn't you put it on the skin, huh? No, honey, you got to season both sides. Okay, so that's that for oregano. And I always like to move it to a different side once I'm done putting the seasoning because I will forget. You can do this with gloves. I don't have any gloves, but if you had some, go crazy. Smoke paprika. Mm. I love paprika. So this is onion powder. I'm very generous with the onion powder. <laughs> A little too generous with it. It's okay, it's okay. I don't do too much Cajun seasoning because Cajun, you know, it's a little spice, spice, but I like to add a little kick of it. I will do the parsley flakes on the stove because they fall really fast, really easily. Garlic powder is also another, I mean, you can never go wrong with garlic powder and onion powder. And I also try to get like the front of it. Y'all see the right right there? Mm -hmm. I like to be, I like to put it on my hand because, man, I don't trust the salt. Salt can go crazy. I just turned on the stove to medium high heat, so it's on six right now. I'm gonna let that get hot, and then we can add the salmon. You don't wanna add the salmon here while it's not hot yet. So now that that baby's ready, be careful, cause it's hot, turn off the stove. But if you're not sure, this is your first time doing this and you're not sure it's ready, grab a fork and stab the potatoes. And if they go right through like that, bam, it's ready. If it's hard for you to get the, the fork on that potato is not ready so now we're gonna take this to the sink and you're gonna want to grab one of these and you're carefully gonna throw that in there you want to shake it out then you're gonna throw this into a bowl i prefer to throw it into a bowl that has a lid that way i can easily store it and then bam i'm good to go but you don't have to it's just what i like to do to save from more dishes that I have to wash. These are the ingredients that we're working with right now. Sometimes I like to add some thyme to it, but it just 
depends on what I'm making. So for the mashed potatoes, we're gonna do pepper, salt, parsley flakes, and milk. The key with the milk is you're gonna warm up the milk first. I do a little bit of milk, not too much. And see, like that's already, actually like a little more. That's good enough right there. That's literally less than one fourth of a cup. You can barely see it. That's that's just how little I want it. Just depends on what type of mashed potatoes you're going for. I'm going for a like a regular consistency. Some people like their mashed potatoes soggy. I don't. And I don't know if I showed you a close up of the mashed potatoes. And then this to mash the potatoes. I don't know what brand this is, but it says chef chef style. So first I'm gonna mash the potatoes and see how easy it is to mash the potatoes. My shoulder hurts. I think I slept funny. Mash it pretty good. And as I'm mashing it, then we're gonna add some uh, butter. And the butter doesn't have to be warmed up, but you can. But the mashed potatoes, since they're warm, hot, they're gonna warm it up for us. So I just grab a spoonful of butter. Guess whatever butter you like. And mix that in there together. And I don't know about y'all, but I love me some butter. So I always like to add a big chunk. Y'all see that? That's a lot of butter. That's good stuff. <laughs> I never said this was gonna be a healthy meal. Okay, then this is where I start adding the milk. And like I said, this is all the milk I got. And it might seem like that's not enough, but trust me, for the consistency I'm going for, it's enough. And by the way, this is whole milk. Some people like to know that stuff. Oh, you know what? I'm wondering how it tastes with some almond milk. I wonder if that would be crazy. I feel like that would be crazy. This is turning out really good. I might add a little more. Y'all see, we run out of milk and this is perfect. That's all we need. But like I said, if you really want a soggy mashed potato, then add some more milk. It's all with the consistency that you want to do your mashed potatoes. And I'm gonna add more butter. I know y'all gonna be like, whoa, I think that was enough butter. Mm, not for me. Mashed potatoes are one of the easiest things you can make in your kitchen. I don't feel like I can mess that up. Okay, that's looking very messy to me. I'm satisfied. Now, this is where we have fun. That's what it's looking like, mashy. Then I'm gonna add black pepper. Then I like to mix that in. Parsley flakes. I go crazy with the parsley flakes, I can't even lie to you. The trickiest part, I guess I would say, is the salt but we also have fun with the salt. One thing that uh, a lot of people that cook, they'll do a taste test. So you can do a taste test if, you know, because if you, know, you want to make sure the food's good before you give it to anybody. You know what I'm going to do though? I'm going to add some more butter. Yeah, this shit's crazy. Just a little more butter. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm going to top it off with some more parsley flakes and then just leave it. I like to leave it there for presentation. I'm actually going to add some butter to the pan. Put some extra flavor. That's what it's looking like. I'm getting the stuff ready for the oven. So you want to spray this as well. So let's go ahead and spray this Pyrex. Mm -hmm. It's looking like right there. Four more minutes on the other side. Now it's ready. I'm going to flip it. Skin side up and put it in there. This is what it's looking like, and it looks mainly like that because of the butter that I added. Okay, so now we're gonna add it to the oven for 15 minutes. 15 minutes on the clock there. I did wanna mention I'm also gonna be making this drink, Crystal Light, and I like to use two of the packets. I'm gonna fill this up. You wanna fill the line up to about right here it says three three l okay now while the salmon's cooking this is what i put it um as high as sometimes i go higher we're gonna open these up and i'm gonna do two and this is the flavor lemonade i believe one two and you're gonna mix it all and keep mixing until you're satisfied i guess and there you go a simple affordable drink you can make at home. Now while that's cooking, you also can make a little topping sauce in the same skillet to keep the flavor, add more flavor even. We're gonna add some butter to a pan. That's a lot of butter, but honey. Get your lemon juice. The butter is melting there, let that melt. Then I'm gonna start adding my lemon juice. 
It's got a lot of lemon juice. And if you had lemon, you could actually put some lemons or, yeah, put some lemons on top of your salmon. And then I'm going to add some good amount of honey there. And then I'm going to mix all that together. Now this is for whoever wants the little sauce on top of it. Just grab a scoop of this, place it over your salmon. I'm going to put the little sauce that I made in here. Now, while all of that is doing its thing, I washed my asparagus, patted it dry. And we're gonna cut the booty. Uh, I guess it's up to you to decide how much you wanna cut. I don't know why we got this thick ass asparagus, but you're gonna line them up, line them babies up, and I feel like that's good right there. Then you're gonna put it in a bowl, and you wanna season it with some salt and pepper. I wish I had a different bowl, but it's fine. Or like a more flatter bowl, but I guess this works. And I'm gonna grab whatever is at the bottom of the bowl, all the salt that's at the bottom of the bowl, and kind of play with it. And put it on the asparagus. And I might even add some more salt and pepper on the stove once I put it up in there. It's up to you. Now the salmon's done, so we're gonna take it out. And you can also use a thermometer if you're not sure if it's ready. This is what it's looking like. It looks so good. I like to put it on four, add that butter. We're not done with the butter. Now that that's nice and hot, I'm gonna put the asparagus in there. You're gonna wanna just grab the butter and put it on top of the asparagus. I'm also gonna do my secret ingredient. I'm kidding, it's not a secret ingredient. <laughs> lemon juice. Bam, bam, bam. Go crazy with my lemon juice. And then sprinkle that on top. Then I like to move around the asparagus. I'm gonna cut the asparagus for a good five to ten minutes. I'm gonna add a little more salt. It's not done cooking, but I wanted to show you guys what it's looking like. And so this is what I do. I put the pan over like that and grab the little juice because it's easier and then sprinkle sprinkle it all across the asparagus. And then just kind of play with it. And there you have it guys. An easy meal that everybody can make at home. I think this recipe or this meal is very beginner friendly. Got the rice ready to go. Mashed potatoes mashing. Got the little sauce with the spoon. You know, gotta worry, gotta think about the guest. I cut the, the piece. It was very easy to cut, by the way. And the asparagus. My favorite part about this is the fact that I don't have to clean anything because I cleaned as I went. Enjoy. See you guys later.